thank you, Dylan, for inviting me, Stephen. Yeah. Oh, I, I plan to read uh, ongoing my travel of writing. Uh, it's still going on. But uh, Dylan said I uh, suggested, I mean, he didn't say <laughs> Japanese. So I would read two haiku in English and Japanese. And there's some French translation if you like to read later. I can't read. So. <laughs> I mean, I, I try. muite banyu ni Peeling potato skins, I get in touch with 1,000 things. Shall I try French? Go ahead, go ahead. Je de potat, je tush, tush, milk shoes. Here's that tush again. Milk shoes. Hayazaki no suisen mabushi wakare michi. Forked paths. The dazzling early blooming daffodils. All of Porsche, John Kill, Pellet Posse, Eclatant. Buy the book. Anyway, <laughs> five euros. I can read it in uh, French, in Japanese, uh, in English. I, I, this is my book for this trip. I, whenever I go for a trip, I bring a blank book and make a kind of writing. But this one, I started, I gave the book a title in, in New York before I left there. The book, the title is called A Stretch in Paradise. I took it from Henry Miller's um, Quiet Days in Cliché. Yeah. And uh, it's so a little collages, other things. And I wrote one poem in New York thinking about this Momad and this area. So it starts with this little writing. Painful or pleasurable, but nevertheless delightful. Stretch in paradise, Momad. This poem, long poem, is written in New York. Looking at the mountain of the martyr from New York City. Some Dionysius, Dennis, Denis, Denis, decapitated, decapitated on top of the mountain of a hardened earth in 250 AD, picked up his head and lifted to the sky heaven. The eyes in the head capture the darkness beyond the blue-gray void, and he started running, headless, holding his head in his arm hands. For six miles, almost 10 kilometers, he shouted, screamed, mumbled, uttered, murmured, Sephophores, Sephophores, again and again as he ran. On 84 Bluebird Rosh Hashanah, Le Chat Noir opened in 1881 and moved to the second location in 1885 and closed on 1896. Sati, whom I like to call by his first name Eric, lived on 6th Rue Cofort, not too far from his workplace. Every season, the cobblestone hill was exposed to the essential elements of life, nature. Eric lived, worked in a cabaret called Eternity, going up and down the hill. Toulouse was fragile, but normal when he was born. An accident he encountered in his prepubic period made him a freak. A normal upper body versus an abnormal lower body. He was forced to live in the valley between them. Mountain of the Martyrs had become his world, a miniature of an expansive universe. He moved to Paris directly from his birthplace in the south at the age of 18, wow, and <laughs> never moved out of there and he died in Paris at age 
of 36. Oops, in Montmartre, because he never moved out of Montmartre. <laughs> the mountain of the martyrs, appropriately. French people love to eat rabbits, and they know how to cook well. How, how to cook them well. Ideality of rabbits never fail to add more taste, subtle and fragrant, to the newly harvested local wine from the local vineyard. Theo's newly wet wife cooked for three of them at the third floor apartment on 55 Rue Lepic. Theo bought his brother canvases, paints, and brushes so his brother can work on the mountain of martyrs. It used to be a studio for artists. Now, it's a museum. When you see the reminiscence of artists who drunk earthquake, half absinthe, one, one portion of red wine, and a large, no, half portion of absinthe, and one full portion of red wine, and a large drop of cognac, that's earthquake, it's mixed. <laughs> of artists who drank earthquakes regularly. The history broken to pieces awaits tourists' glances. Like-minded people became friends on the top of the hill. Some ships sailed briefly, as others did lifelong. Vincent and Emile, Vincent and Toulouse, Vincent and Paul, a poet who arrived much, much later when they are all gone, washed dishes and enjoyed his solitude, that Langston Hughes, mm -hmm. on the same hill. <laughs> to have Suzanne Valadon as your mother is a blessing and a curse, magnified to the maximum. At least his son was strong enough to die of alcoholism, <laughs> escaping from committing a suicide. At an apartment at Rue de Douai, is it? Douai. Douai. Yeah, Rue de Douai. An artist's mother slept alone after taking care of her ailing child, that's true, living nearby. The son left her at 18, and then left her eternally at 36. Bateau Lava was not a boat, nor a laundromat. <laughs> <laughs> it was more like a commune in, in a collective style, but now it's just a name plaque. Quite a few of my mentors and teachers lived work there before they became known to the world. Being totally unknown, I desperately need to do a big wash <laughs> <laughs> before I fly, before I fly the sun on the hill. <laughs> Our friends moved from Rue Rambato to Rue Victor Massé, so now we stay in Pigalle. Avenue Frochot is right around the corner from the apartment, but its iron gate Iron Lace Gate is closed to outsiders. Inside the gate, so much and so many things happen. Dumas, Goncourt, Delacroix, Musset, Berlioz, Saint Louis, Truth, Truth, Lautrec, Victor Hugo, Gustave Moreau, Jean Renoir, Django Reinhardt, Francois Truffaut, and Laura, even Laura and Hardy were all here. Now, some well-known high fashion designer lives there, but I'm not for anyone who caters to bourgeoisie, so I skip mentioning his name. <laughs> <laughs> On Avenue Frochot, Saint John wrote a book on his father, August. On Avenue Frochot, Saint Francois visited his father, John. Did you get it? <laughs> <laughs> Apolline Sabatier, who hosted a great salon in Avenue Frochot, 
share the same first name with the daughter of our good friend Didi. Mm -hmm. And Didi shares the nickname with one of my favorite characters in one of my favorite plays. Do you know which one? Yeah. <laughs> Waiting for the Bobo yeah. yeah. and Didi. Yeah. And author of the play wrote it in the language which was not his mother tongue in this adapted form. Right? <laughs> Nobel Atham at nine plus Pigal was one of the most popular bars of the area when everybody competed collecting Japanese woodcut prints of the floating world. That's true. Cafe Welper, Welper was one of the uh, Cafe Welper has one of the best hot chocolate. I'll go back there again and order one. While waiting to be served, I sit discreetly, discreetly relaxed, pretending that I was one of those girls who are waiting for a customer in Henry Miller's Quiet Days in Chrissy. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many ways to be martyrs. There are so many ways to lead to the top of the hill. And affected by progress and urbanization, a windmill of comedy divine still turn even when there is no wind. On the mountain of the martyrs, I cross an ocean of imagination in anticipation, so humble and jittery romantic to breathe the air open to the sky. That's the poem I wrote before I left. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So the next, the new, the one I wrote, I read the next section. <laughs> Thank you very much to all three poets. You'll hear them again in the second half, I hope. But in the meantime, there are many, many books here to buy, including Nina's new chapbook. And of course... I picked one part uh, from the writing I did in Paris. I started in Paris. I stand by the front window, looking out to the world. I see the windows and walls of the building across the street, as if, if I keep my eyes completely parallel to my feet. If I look up, I see a sky above the rooftop, and looking down, I see a street. People walk, cars run, nothing changed. It's basically the same landscape even if you're closer to the hill rather than to the river here in Pigal. In the evening, I sit in the dark with no light on. Through the windows, street lights leak in. Warm yellow orange tint makes the room I'm in as if it is floating somewhere in some rather unknown, unfamiliar space. I keep quiet, just feeling the deepening dusk and its sensual anonymity. As I sink into it, I physically, metaphysically realize that there is no inside, no outside, no dark, no light, not even waking and sleeping. Ever-changing sensation of the moment put me into some dreamy state of mind, and I felt like I am suspended outside the window above the street, between the two buildings. The level has not changed, but I am in the air, surely. I am here and I am there. A kaleidoscopic movement of cars passing makes a mosaic-like shadow play on the dark ceiling of the room. Noise is minute. As the sense of I, I gets more and more blurred, things become more and more miraculous. I took the first walk of this trip to the hill with S. 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 Whoa, S. All the, all the living people are initialed. So that, yeah. 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 S can mean lots of things. So that, get people, yeah. they are exposed. Yeah. I took the first walk 
of this trip to the, to the hill with S, and S took me to the route he's discovered, the one with much less steps and much less people. We walk up a slope to get to the first small square. You could see the cityscape as if it's a postcard scape from here. Bato Labao, I said, yes. It's a long gone residency of many of my heroes. Again and again, I try to stop thinking about them, but I can't succeed. Memory, uh, okay, I see. When we started out our walk from Rue Victor Massé, as we passed Foley Pigal's sad, worn out building with missing A, which makes the sign pig. <laughs> We run into a truth-like young man coming out of one of those seedy-looking sex bars. He was with a woman of his age, could be his sister or his lover. He had a completely normal-sized head <laughs> with an abnormal, diminished lower body, like truth. They looked rather straight giving the air of not belonging to this dark, seedy world. It was like a sign for me, or a greeting from the past present of this area. My romantic attachment to this Montmartre is very intense, and how can I not connect the image of truth to this young man who resembles him so much? It was like his doppelganger. Soon he disappeared into Metro Pigalle station. So after seeing a ghost of truth walking up the area unpopulated with tourists of our time, leading up to Bateau Laba gave me an actual physical sensation of tracing my hero's breath of everyday life. It was not that cold for the season, but occasionally the wind blew from nowhere to remind us of the harsh nature of elements in this area. Bateau Laval now is just a window, sign, nothing real. Even so, I could not stop feeling the past being so present. In the sense of natural history, 100 years nothing, I excuse my romantic tendency. I turn to right, walking up shortly, uh, we turn right, walking up shortly. We are standing in front of Le Consolet the spot all the artists of Bateau Labau used to hang out. Vincent must have spent some time with truth there. The closeness of distance between Bateau Labau and Le Consulat was quite uh, impressive. It's like having an adjunct kitchen drinking place right next to your work, live work space. It's a perfect distance to walk back home dead drunk with earthquake. <laughs> no steps, no twist and turn. You get to your nest without any problem. Your animal instinct alone will guide you back home safely. Passing the Lake Consola, where now waves of tourists crash constantly, we walk through the square to go to the top of the hill. Up on the hill, a white dome stands. Its history is quite shallow, but it attracts all of us one way or the other. Some pray, some rest their feet there. In silence, we close and open our doors of individuality to eternity. S decided to wait for me on the bench in the park below. I stayed inside the basilica, thinking of many things, watching backs of people's existence. The backs of their heads, torsos, looked almost innocent, ridden with unbearable sadness unaware. How can I blame any human wanting to lean on something grand, even if this something is illusionary? We are so tiny, so tiny, to keep on our sanity to keep our sanity alive, depending on ourselves alone. Soon I joined S in the park bench. We sat for a while to see the sunset. Clouds covered the setting sun. 
we left the hill as the wind got more and more elemental, a song. Another daybreak, another sunset. We give ourselves to the movement, movement of cosmos. Another birthday, another year added. I'm one year old, blowing one candle on a cake. Another sunset, another daybreak. We practice, we praise the perfect sunset with anonymous others together. On the hill of martyrs, Jesus gives spirit and light to Paris. Jesus gives spirit and light to Paris. Two girls sing, chant in French in a chorus. The earth turns slightly more as we sunk ourselves in the silver gold sunset and its pink afterglow. I turn my head toward Basilica's white dome. There, a moon risen, moon has risen quietly and gently in mid-January sky, as if it's playing an ancient tune. Without being born, I cannot be here. Being here now, I celebrate, I, I celebrate my day of birth, that was my birthday, <laughs> with friends. It's okay, Yuko. Tout de bien, all is well. Breathe well, eat well, sleep well, be gentle and kind. Strangely fascinating to face others' windows from your window without having no connection to the one who lives there. The world behind the windows across the street is like a play behind the curtain on the stage, a mysterious, curious story untold. I enjoy... I know it's... I enjoy the sense of inhabited anonymity they project to no one. Windows closed, balconies with flower pots, some empty, some with dead plants, and some with cypermen and geranium in them. Of white stone walls look moist with the late afternoon air. Soon, we'll take another walk to see the world in and outside of us. That's what <laughs> You want a little drink? It's okay. Where shall I read now? Then I read one more part. So. Okay. Follies, pleasure and leisure, merry making and fun. It's not even about lust, desire, or vice. It's about forgetting the misery of the floating world. Windmill turn, windmills turn to make flour from wheat, and the red windmill turns to flare up the heat of the foliage. As I again step through the vineyard, all wrapping a chill and the oldest house on the hill, I finally got so sick of myself for being so romantically involved with the past. Cezanne was here, so what? <laughs> Manet was here, so what? <laughs> Suzanne Vallon took her clothes off for Degas, so what? <laughs> Apollinaire had a debate with Picasso, so what? <laughs> Vincent met truth on the street, so what? I finally have reached to the limit of feeling nostalgic about all those artists and their La Boheme life. And all, all of a sudden, felt so fed up with my own inability to cope with, my, with the moment now. They're all gone. All and all you follow is your own meekness to hide your elusive sense of your own reality. Bravo, bravo, bravo.